What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan. And I am here to make my uh, Dallas Cowboys versus Miami Dolphins um, preview video. Uh, obviously, you know, so today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. That means the game is tomorrow. It'll be 10 o'clock a.m. here on the West Coast, 1 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast. And uh, we play in Dallas. Um, so it's obviously, it's going to be our first away game of the season, uh, which obviously, uh, away games, you know, at least in theory are a bit more difficult, right? Cause you have, uh, you do not have home field advantage. Although I don't know that we've really had much of a home field advantage, at least this year. Uh, the weather se hasn't seemed to help us. We got spanked in both of our first two games which were both at home and uh i mean even the crowd was either thin or comprised heavily of the other team's um fans the past two games from what i saw so unfortunately it doesn't look like we have much of a home field advantage at this moment but that does make it a bit more difficult uh before i actually get into like you know comparing how each team did you know in their previous game and so on and so forth uh there is a quote from Stephen Ross that I want to talk about really fast. And also, I want to uh, discuss... It's more of a comment. There was some rhetorical questions in this comment. It's a fan comment. Uh, Michael Lenahan uh, put this on... Uh, posted this on one of uh, my, uh, my recent videos in the comment section. Uh, I say it's rhetorical because he kind of answered his own question. Uh, questions um, but I want to further expound upon it so <clears throat> what he had to say was why didn't the Dolphins keep Nate Orchard and is Taco Charlton going to be an upgrade over him he goes on to say just another Chris Greer stiff that he decided to bring in we are really good at picking up other teams leftovers which is absolutely true Chris Greer I mean he's he's shown to do that in the past as well um, and so, you know, other regimes of ours have done that in the past as well, to be, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like all that they want in this regime right now, up to this point, is just, you know, other teams cast offs and, uh, you know, perennial backups and like practice squad players. Like they're not there anyway. So let me finish though. He says, none of these guys are difference makers. That's why they are on the open market. Why not bring in Hugh Jackson as a coach to ensure an 0-16 season? So obviously he's throwing a little shade there at, at Huey Jack, but you know, whatever, man. I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, but it's it's that's the thing, right? Is so I wanted to expound upon it because I it has to be made uh, the point has to be made. There are obviously still people in massive denial, but this team is designed to be bad. This team was built to be bad, right? So that's why it's super disingenuous at best, although I consider it to be a flat out lie when the coaching staff says, you know, oh, we're not tanking, so on and so forth. And, and, and things like, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go out there and try to win every game. Okay, well, you know, sure. Do I believe you if, it, you know, when you say that you are gonna, specifically you're going to go out there and try every, you know, every day of practice and so on and so forth? Because I don't know that the players are. I don't know that they're, especially right now, I don't know that they're totally bought into this, you know, um, and giving it their all. But sure, okay. Do I believe that you want to go out there and win every game? And do I believe that the players want to win every game? Yeah, absolutely, of course. Um, but you built the team to do the exact opposite. You in this front office. And besides, <clears throat> let's not forget, you know, with recent reporting, we have found out that, you know, uh, part of the, the breakup between Gase and... Stephen Ross was because Ross asked Gase to tank this year so that way they could get a quarterback and he refused and um yeah so I mean look and it's it and it and it, it puts 
his other comments, the, the comments that he made in one of those press conferences where he said that he didn't need to lobby for his job, it makes that actually a lot clearer because, uh, you know, that was towards the end of the season uh, last year, you know, and there was talk about whether or not he, you know, was worried about his job or getting fired or what have you. And he was like, look, man, I don't need to lobby for my job. You know, I have I have firm beliefs. You know, I have a, a way that I want to build this team, and I think I'm doing pretty fucking good. You know, we've had some setbacks the past couple years, but all that shit was nowhere near in my control. I mean, he didn't say all this, but it was all kind of implied in that one statement, right? Is is that, you know, I think I'm doing a good job. We had some, some unfortunate setbacks, shit I could not have foreseen, but we did the best that we could. And, you know, we're going to move on. We're going to get healthy. We're going to have another good draft. And next year, we're going to come out fucking swinging and be competitive. And apparently, Stephen Ross is, I don't know, either. And this is why he can't make good football decisions. Because they, because either he's just blind or he just has no patience or, I don't know. I, I mean, it could be a combination of things. But anyway, so like, you know, he's, he just... He didn't acknowledge it in that way. He's just like, no, you know, uh, we had the one really good year and I don't know. I don't know if he, like, I don't know if he can see, could see what they were building, what he was building and stuff like that. I don't know if it's maybe he just got butt hurt because, you know, they didn't do exactly what he wanted them to do. Right. Because there was, uh, uh, you know, tons of reports about how Stephen Ross didn't like the Minka Fitzpatrick uh, pick and wanted a quarterback. In fact, Josh Rosen even could have been the pick, right? Um, instead of the Cardinals. So, I mean, look, and, and that could have played a, a part, or you know, played part into why they picked up Rosen and so on and so forth. So, look, man, I mean. He just, he doesn't know how to make good, you know, good football decisions. He makes them for all the wrong reasons. He makes them for like, you know, because he's either impatient or because, you know, he's ill-informed, he's ignorant, he doesn't understand why things are the way they are, or because he's, you know, uh, just wants things done exactly his way. And if you don't, you know, if you don't go with that, then, you know, if you have your own it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if it, you know, it doesn't even matter if it could potentially work. Because if you don't do what I want, then, and sure, he's the majority owner, but, I mean, you hire these guys to do their job and then you don't even give, you know, you didn't even give the dude a chance. And, you know, you could argue that Philbin had too long. Right, sure, but he was given. I, you know, generally my general uh, philosophy on a regime is give him a five-year window. They had that time, right, and they proved they couldn't do it. And then they went with Adam Gase, um, and I thought that was the right move. But it was premature in the firing. Now, in this case, I think that this regime, not just Brian Flores, but the entire regime, which includes Stephen Ross has far more issues than just their massive ineptitude when it comes to football decisions, right? So, and that's why I want all of them gone. I just want, but anyway, let me get on though, because I am obviously ranting. I'm already about 10 minutes into this video and I haven't even gotten to any of the stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Um, I'm, I, I like preluded it with a bunch of stuff. Anyway, so let's get to um the comment that ross made but it does tie into all this right so joe shad tweeted in the spring in the spring right i asked miami so months ago i asked miami dolphins owner steven ross what traits he hopes the organization finds in their next franchise quarterback so real quick let's also keep in mind that right after he fired gase he was like, yeah, you know, I hope I don't have to go three and 13, but you know, it could be one, two or three years before we're even competitive. That came from the owner right after he just fired his head coach, right? And at the time though, we didn't know that he basically demanded Gase tank this year for a quarterback for which he refused. 
and that obviously obviously as a part to play in in why Gase was fired as well so let's keep all those things in mind anyway this is what he said you want a guy that's a winner okay great that's going to put that effort in okay cool we'll provide a spark got it intelligent okay sweet sturdy ball player that can withstand a lot of hits because that's what this game is about there's a little more, I'll finish. A real leader, that's what you want. At the end of the day, that's what you need in a quarterback is a real leader. All of that quote is fine, right? Except for the sturdy ball player that can withstand a lot, a lot of hits. With the reasoning, because that's what the game is about. Okay, so. The reason why that's problematic is because it shows that he is just, he's hes really, he's really like just 100% into this, into the notion. And it's a common notion, but it's one that I push back on a lot, right? The notion that all you need is a franchise quarterback, that, that you get the dude, you get your dude, and it doesn't matter. It does not matter anything else. Do, nothing else matters, right? You get the you get the dude, and even with that dude, if you have a, a couple bad years, blah blah blah. At some point, you get your you are just gonna raise to like all time greatness. Once you just get that one guy. But what that tells me is is that you really are just so invested in getting a quarterback that you really don't care about the team around him and that has been made abundantly clear with the 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 to the level and depth that they've stripped this team right so that's why you go in the next draft okay if you get to a tag of but it but what that says is what that says to me is is that you expect your your you expect your quarterback to get hit a lot like he said it, a sturdy ball player that can withstand a lot of hits. Dude, the best teams, their quarterbacks don't get hit a lot. The worst teams, their quarterbacks get hit a lot. That part of that quote is devastating. Devastating. Because that means that they are going sure they might take an offensive lineman early in the in the in the draft next year. But they're not going to do anywhere. And then they're, they're, they might even try and spend big in the offseason on an offensive lineman. And they're going to try and sell that as like, okay, you get one first round offensive lineman. Which I could even see them being stupid and waiting and to take that offensive lineman until after there's been a run on the top talent in the draft. Because that's, that's what they did this past draft. They took a defensive lineman, Christian Wilkins, nothing against him, but they took a defensive lineman after they after there was a massive run on defensive linemen in the first round. It's just a fact. That's what they did. And so um, I wouldn't be surprised. But so that, that signals to me that there at, at the very least could potentially be significant neglect across the offensive line. So they're going to say maybe, you know, one first round offensive lineman, you get your supposed franchise quarterback, and you get one more offensive lineman that's probably, you know, a, a dude who's a little bit older with some more wear and tear on him, but he's a veteran guy that's, you know, may, maybe he's like 25 or 26 coming into, you know, a big contract from some from some team that doesn't want to pay or can't pay him because they don't have the cap space, whatever. And then you're like, oh, there you go. There you go. It's fixed. And then Tua Tagovailoa or Justin Herbert or somebody's grandmother that's back there gets murdered because they decide they want to neglect the offensive line. And based off of all the information I have right now with... Steven Ross demanding that Adam Gase tank and then subsequently firing him after uh, he declines, right? When you have, he disagreed with the Minka Fitzpatrick pick because he wanted, which was the last draft that Gase was a part of, 
Chris Greer was a part of as well though let's let's know um but uh because he wanted a quarterback the reason why he wants to tank this year is because he wants a quarterback he said it is in his uh post firing of Adam Gay's press conference well I hope and this was coded language for I expect it but I hope that I don't have to go 3 and 13 this next year but it could be one, two, or three years before we're even competitive. And then he hires a coach who is obviously 100% fine with a tank job, which is even more devastating, though, for the future of this franchise. Because if, if Steven Ross, you know, not only greenlit it, but gave the order. That means Steven Ross is fully bought into this massive tank job that they're doing in this massive gamble, which lends even more to the fact that it could be, it's highly likely, especially with the extent to which that they have stripped this team, that it's a multi-year tank. So this year, it is highly likely that we will have to endure a historically bad season and be the worst team in NFL history. That is a very real possibility. And then next year, we could be maybe marginally better. That is so disastrous. So disastrous. But this is what we are dealing with. And unfortunately, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see it play out that way. And it's, it's, it's disheartening to say the least. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's that with the Stephen Ross uh, comment. Um, and so I, I already, you know, I already talked about Michael Lenahan's comments and stuff like that. So, okay, so I got through, <laughs> finally, I did get through all that. Now I can start moving on. Uh, you, you know, but those are super important things that I did want to, want to, you know, talk about and address, especially those comments by Ross. And now with all of this information, the various different things that we've seen, it's just, it's really a, a, you know, a disaster that's it already happening, but that seems to only the, the data points that it's going to get, you know, quite a bit worse before it gets any, before it even has a chance to get better. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and move and so let's move into this game before I Give you you know the stats and stuff like that and the, the game comparisons Let me give you the injury report. I want to make sure to do that. So for us it is um, Official that Rashad Jones and Albert Wilson will miss uh, two consecutive games look and you know what? It's they both have injuries, right? So Albert Wilson has the calf injury. Rashad Jones has uh, an ankle injury, I believe, or some kind of foot injury. And look, I could be totally reading way too much into this. Totally could be reading way too much into this. But it's kind of funny to me that. After the whole thing with Kenny Stills and Brian Flores, right? That little thing, right? All of a sudden you have Brian Flores claiming that Kenny Stills isn't, you know, practicing hard enough or whatever. And then all of a sudden Kenny Stills ends up on the injury report. Just out of nowhere. Ends up on the injury report for some weird little thing. I don't even know what. Then they trade him. He's with the Texans and... He's, you know, getting some production there. Perfectly fine. No injury at all, apparently. He's good to go. The other guy on the team that protests is Albert Wilson. And he's... I mean, I'm not saying that the injury is not real, but he's also, you know, sidelined. And Rashad Jones... Uh, a veteran who could possibly be the you know one of the the veteran guys that was looking for uh you know a trade opportunity that's speculation of course there's nothing about that that is confirmed but has also had <clears throat> um you know his own 
personal gripes with this organization, which to be fair, dates uh, back before um, Brian Flores, but also Adam Gase, right? Rashad Jones is, has, you know, been frustrated for a while now that, you know, his prime years are being wasted with the Dolphins. Um, anyway, so it's just kind of funny that those guys are, you know, injured. I'm not, again, I'm not saying that their injuries aren't real, but, you know, Kenny still seemed to be fine and he's doing well in, in, yeah, so Jones has an ankle, Wilson is hip calf, both ruled out. Um, neither player practiced at all this week. Uh, although there were reports that Jones is supposedly close to getting back. So let's see how it goes, right? So if the injury is legit, then let's see if he finally gets back into practice. And if he is, if it was legit and then he's healthy, let's see how they use him, right? Because if, if, if he gets healthy and even if he comes back to practice, but then they don't play him, well, then that could be kind of telling, right? So we'll see how that goes. It's just, you know, a, a, a curious thing to me. It could mean absolutely nothing, whatever. Um, but anyway, defensive end Charles Harris with a wrist, linebacker Trent Harris with a foot, and cornerback Bobby McCain with a shoulder all were questionable. Harris and McCain both played in week two and both are expected to play. But that's unfortunate because Bobby McCain is definitely one of our you know best players we got left and he's banged up um charles harris i mean obviously has is trending much farther towards bust at this moment but um you know <clears throat> is definitely supposed to be a big part of what's going on and stuff right so you know i don't know um but he's banged up um, Josh Rosen and cornerback Ken Webster were both on the injury report, or, uh, but did not have game time uh, designations. Now, let's also keep in mind, Josh Rosen did have an injury scare. And look, dude, I'm, I'm legit scared for the kid, right? Like, I'm worried that he's going to get hurt, right? Because Fitzpatrick already got the shit knocked out of him. He had a cut on his on the upper bridge of his nose. Rosen, for the short time he was in this last game, had a scare, and it was a knee scare, right? So, I'm, and this offensive line is garbage. I'm legitimately scared that he's going to get hurt, and, but the same thing goes for Fitzpatrick. I'm legitimately scared that we actually might even lose both quarterbacks to injury by the year is over, by the, by the, by the time the season is over. Maybe even you know halfway through with the with the beating that they are taking if they, if it continues we could lose both our quarterbacks by year's end we might end up seeing Jake Ruddock in you know to play meaningful snaps or even to start because of injuries it is legitimately possible so something we have to keep an eye on also uh real quick with the Charles Harris thing you know I mentioned in one of my previous videos I think maybe my last one the Dolphins have because somebody pointed out that uh we have six former first round picks on the team right now okay but all of them haven't none of them have done shit you know in the NFL to this point and you know a few of them, like Devontae Parker and Charles Harris, are, you know, Devontae Parker's technically passed his, his rookie contract and doesn't seem like he's going to, you know, do shit this year yet again. Charles Harris, you know, isn't really doing much, right? And he's kind of hurt. Looks like he's going to end up being more on the bust end. You got Taco Charlton, who's got you know, kicked off uh, the Cowboy squad, fired, right, whatever, cut from Cowboys. And I read you the quotes from uh, Jerry Jones, and they are usually pretty good in their picks and their evaluations, right? Um, you know, so like, these guys are not, you know, I mean, Christian Wilkins is really the only one that you have because he's He's, we just got him this year, but even, even him, you know, this year's going to be a waste for him, right? He's not going to rack up any big stats or any, especially too, because he's an interior defensive lineman, right? 
So he could even have, he could even, you know, quietly have a good year, but that might, you know, it's going to hurt him overall because he's going to be on a garbage team. So, but then you, you get rid of all the, 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 the good first round picks that you had, right? <clears throat> Minka Fitzpatrick, Laramie Tunsil, right? And for, you know, even if you think he's the worst of the bunch, Ryan Tannehill, even though I think he's a really good quarterback, right? Juwan James, right? All these guys that were former first round picks that were proven guys, proven commodities, you let him go, right? Anyway, so uh, as I did already report, though, the Cowboys have listed out a, a receiver Michael Gallup with a knee and wide receiver Tavon Austin with a concussion. Now, those are two uh, guys that are important, but they have plenty of weapons, which we will get to as we get through the, the stats from the previous game and so on and so forth. So they're not really hurting not having those guys in there. Defensive end Tyrone Crawford, linebacker Luke Gifford, I don't, and defensive tackle Antoine Woods. I don't really know how big a, a impact those guys are supposed to make on their defense. I don't really know those guys, so I can't say for sure, just keeping it real. But safety, Xavier Woods is a significant um, loss for their defense. Although, and you, I'll get to this later, they didn't, they're, when we go over their defensive statistics from the previous game, it's not that impressive, but just like I said last week, I'd be willing to bet that those defensive statistics are going to rise after they've played us, just like they did with the Patriots, right? The Patriots didn't go into that game last week with a lot of sacks and tackles for loss and passes defense and blah, 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 all those things, but they certainly had a pretty massive uptick after playing us, right? They had, what, three interceptions, uh, at least four sacks, like, it was just, it was crazy, right? So, unfortunately, I think that is going to be the case yet again this week. But obviously, we will have to wait and see how that plays out tomorrow. Uh, okay, so now let me get into the breakdowns of, you know, where we stand, league standings for both teams, and, you know, uh, a comparison of, of our game versus, you know, how we did in our game last last week to how the Cowboys did in their game against the Redskins. Um, so let's see. Obviously, uh, we're 0-2. They are 2-0. So from that perspective, obviously they're, you know, they're better than us. They're a 2-0 team. We're an 0-2 team, right? But let's, let's, you know, there could be more to it, right? There is more to it. That's not everything. So let's look at league standings. Points per game. So offensive, we'll start with the offensive side of the ball, right? Points per game, Miami. How many points per game do we have? Five. We've scored five points per game so far, right? And that's 32nd in the league. Dallas is 33 per game. That's fifth in the league. Yards per game, we have 192. That's 32nd. Dallas is at 484. That's second. Um... Pass yards per game, we're at 160.5, that's 30th. Dallas is at 333, that's third. Rushing yards per game, we're at 31 and a half, which is 31st. And they are at 151, which is sixth. Now let's look at that real quick. So obviously our, we're damn near dead last in everything, um, uh, in almost every category. Uh, 30th is our best. And that's pass yards per game, so offensively. So our offense is putrid, um, and their offense is pretty stellar, right? So let's see. Um, defensive statistic. Points allowed, well, we've given up 51. That's 32nd. They've given up 38. That's 12th. Okay, so middle of the pack. Yards allowed, uh, we've given up 511, that's 32nd. They've given up 362 and a half, which is 18th. Okay, middle of the pack again. Pass yards allowed, 316.5 for us, that's 28th. And 263.5 for them, which is 21st. Uh, rush yards allowed, we've given up 194 and a half, which is 32nd. They've given up 99, which is tied for 11th, uh, but at 11th. So their defense is middle of the pack to good, and our defense 
statistically through two games is worst in the league in points allowed, yards allowed, and rush yards allowed, but only 28th in pass yards allowed. Okay, so, but let's look at that. So our defense that is almost the worst in the league across the board is going up against one of the better uh, offenses in the league. Rush yards per game is their worst statistic at sixth, and we're 32nd in the league in that category for defensive statistics, right? Um, and they're 151 yards per game. Of course, they got Ezekiel Elliott, which is going to make that tough. But they're second in yards per game, third in pass yards per game, and fifth in points per game. We are 32nd in points allowed to their fifth. We are 32nd in yards allowed to their second. Uh, 28th in pass yards allowed to, thir to their third in pass yards per game. And 32nd. So, I mean... It looks like their offense should have a fucking heyday and just go to town. Now let's look at our defense or our offense versus their defense again. I mean, their defense is like middle of the pack to good. Our offense is putrid. So it looks like based off of that, their defense should probably logically have an uptick. So let's let's continue on though. So let's look at let's look at the stats and compare stats from the previous games. We had 184 total yards. They had 474. We had 142 passing yards. They had 261. We had 42 rushing yards. They had 213. We were three yards per play. They were at 7.3. Neither team lost a fumble. But we threw four interceptions to their one. We were 13% on third downs. They were 63%. We had the ball for 23 minutes, excuse me, in 30 seconds. They had it for 33 minutes and 22 seconds. We had four penalties. They had eight. Okay, so we beat them in that category. Congratulations. Although, again, that four penalties, that's the official statistic, but that can't be right at all because... There were definitely far more penalties called on us. I'm pretty sure that is just accepted penalties. Um, and who knows? So, you know, we could have ended up having eight or nine penalties on us called overall, which I think is actually probably closer, but only half of them might have gotten accepted. Whereas it is possible that maybe, you know, they had eight penalties and all of them got accepted. Anyway, so, but clearly across the board, far better okay so let's let's do a comparison of quarterbacks josh rosen as we know is going to start for us this week um i think overall it makes sense although i don't think it matters um in the uh, really just in the short term in the long term i think that either quarterback is going to be embarrassed and bruised after each game um but let's look at the statistics so josh rosen is uh, last game was 7 of 18 for 38.9 completion percentage, 97 yards, no touchdowns with an interception, and a 33.8 passer rating. For the season, in, his, in the short time that he's played, he's 38.1 completion percentage for 102 yards, zero touchdowns, and two interceptions with a 33.8 passer rating. Now, Ryan Fitzpatrick is, in most of those statistics, you know, better. Obviously, he's played more, um, and but he does have more interceptions. <clears throat> but he has played more. But last game, Ryan Fitzpatrick was 11 for 21, 52.4 completion percentage, 89 yards, with three interceptions and a 23.8 passer rating. Now, throughout this season, I've been saying this for a while, expect to see both of them quite a bit even in you know the same game don't ex you know don't think that i mean because if if we end up getting shellacked again and completely blown out in this game which is legitimately possible then they might just take josh rosen out you know in the fourth quarter just so he doesn't die and put fitzpatrick in just like we saw in the first two games so don't think that you know fitzpatrick 
You know, just because Rosen's starting doesn't mean that Fitzpatrick won't end up playing at some point. It is definitely possible. Um, but for the season, he's 50% completion percentage, uh, 274 yards, one touchdown, four interceptions with a 39.9 passer rating. So as you see, he's marginally better in completion percentage, yards, touchdowns, and passer rating, but is obviously worse in interceptions. But at the same time, though, Ryan Fitzpatrick threw four interceptions, one of which, let's be fair, is not actually his fault. It was because Kalen Balaj just kind of handed it to Jamie Collins last week. So that's not really fair. So it really should be three. So he should be marginally worse than Rosen. Rosen's played far less, but threw two interceptions. So... I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in this next game, but that's actually not good, right? So, I mean, if you if you if you want to be totally fair and take that one interception off of his off of his record and give him three, he's fifty percent completion, right? Because you know, I said that I think that Josh Rosen is overall the better quarterback and probably does give you the better chance to win. And somebody did in the comments push back on me on that. I mean, when you look at the statistics, I mean, right now, obviously, Rosen has played far less time. But when you extrapolate a little bit, right, I mean, there's a, you know, almost a 12 percentage point difference in completion percentage. There's 172 yard differential in yards. He's got one more touchdown to a zero. Uh, that's only one more interception and the passer rating I don't know so we'll see I mean obviously we just need to see um, we need to see how he does in this game right but again though that's that's part of my the argument I've been giving this entire th this entire time though is, is how can you really even evaluate Josh Rosen that's why again I think it's just a waste for him and you know uh, another reason why I don't think he's even gonna be around maybe potentially next year but certainly not past that he's not gonna be the franchise quarterback because he's gonna get mauled his statistics are, are not gonna be great and it's just it's not gonna be a fair evaluation of him so but anyway we'll have to see anyway but let's see how Dak Prescott did well last game he was 26 for 30, which was 86.7 completion percentage for 269 yards, three touchdowns, one interception with a 123.5 passer rating. Wow. So stark difference between him and both of our quarterbacks, right? We have two guys that have played uh, in both games so far, likely uh, could see, both could see playing time in this next game with Josh Rosen expected to see the most. Uh, but I mean, obviously that's the difference between not only having a good quarterback, but also having a team around him, right? But so in the first two games so far, he is 82.3 uh, completion percentage for 674 yards, seven touchdowns to one interception, and 142.9 passer rating because he had a perfect passer rating in his first game. 158.3, I believe, is what it is. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. So let's look at rushing. Let's see. How do we do? Kenyon Drake was six, had six rushes for 19 yards with a 3.2 average. Mark Walton had three rushes, 15 yards, and a five average. Ryan Fitzpatrick threw in one rush for six yards. Kalen Balaj had four rushes for six yards, a 1.5 average. Jakeem Grant had one rush for negative four yards. Well, on the flip side, Ezekiel Elliott had 23 rushes, 111 yards for one score and a 4.8 average. Dak Prescott threw in five rushes for 69 yards, which is a 13.8 average. So expect that. I mean, not only do we have to worry about Ezekiel Elliott and, uh, you know, anyone else they employ in the run game, but Dak Prescott as well, which I can foresee causing us massive problems, especially in, uh, you know, their stadium. 
Tony Pollard had four rushes for 22 yards, a 5.5 average, 5 .5 average. Randall Cobb had two rushes for 11 yards and a 5.5 average. All right. Receiving statistics, Preston Williams led the way for us, 4 of 6 for 63 yards. Kenyon Drake was 5 of 6 for 29 yards. Durham Smythe, 1 of 1 for 24. Jakeem Grant, 3 of 7 for 22. Alan Hearns, 1 of 2 for 13. Mark Wal Walton, 1 of 2 for 12. And Mike Kosicki, 1 of 2 for 11. Well, on Dallas's end, Devin Smith led the way, 3 of 3, 74 yards and a score. Michael Gallup, 6 for 8, 68 yards. Uh... And of course, he's not going to be playing in this next game. But as you'll see, though, uh, they're not really short for production elsewhere. Um, Amari Cooper was 4 of 5 for 44 yards and a touchdown. Jason Witten was 4 of 4, 25 yards and a score. Randall Cobb was 5 of 6 for 24 yards. Blake Jarwin was 1 of 1 for 22 yards. And when you have an offense where you can really just spread it around a lot, that's going to be super tough for this defense. Defensive statistics. Last game, we had two sacks, two tackles for loss, a forced fumble, uh, and a fumble recovery with three passes defensed. All right. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. But uh, again, and as I've been saying, I thought our defense was going to be our strong suit, but as the year continues on, they're going to get hurt. They're going to get worn out. And... Uh, they're going to... I mean, they've already put two historically bad performances up, but... It can get worse. Don't think that it can't get worse, guys. It can get worse. When the defense continues to get worn out and broke down and demoralized and so on and so forth, it can get worse. And especially, too, God forbid, you know, whatever kind of, you know, voodoo, juju, bullshit you believe in, whatever, knock on wood, hope that Xavier Howard does not get hurt. I mean, he's the one thing we got. I mean, Bobby McCain's already hurt. You know, we got other guys that are, you know, probably going to get banged. Charles Harris is hurt, right? So, I mean, look, with the amount of time that the defense is spending on the field and so on and so forth, it's, it's, it can get worse, guys. It can get worse. Hopefully not. Do I want it to? Of course not. And, like, do I want them to be able to win this game or other games? Of course I do. But I got to be real with y'all. Anyway, Dallas' statistics. One sack, two tackles for loss, and three passes defense. That's it, right? So, um, nothing spectacular. But again, I would venture to guess that those statistics are going to have an uptick after this game um, because of how bad our offense is. So, man, I mean, look. Predictions, predictions. We're gonna lose this game. I don't think I don't think that there's any chance that we can win it. I mean, there's no statistic that bears it out. There's no like anecdotal information that that there's nothing. There's no kind of context or or data point or you know, other than just like the most unrealistic like pipe dreams, right? Beyond any kind of like massive, massive, massive miracle. I mean, anyway, so do I think we're going to get like blown out again? Man, I don't, I don't know. And I hate to say it, but my gut is, is that I think it's going to be another significant loss. Do I think that we're going to not score any points again? Shit, dude. I don't know. Look, I, I, here's the thing. This sucks, right? Because I legitimately think that this offense could be so bad that they have multiple games where they don't score any points. It sucks. But I legitimately think that it's, it's distinctly possible. And it, two games. The first one we scored 10. The second one we scored 0. We have 14 more games to go. Look, I mean, I hope God for I hope we can at least get like, you know, a couple field goals on board. I don't think we're going to break 10 points if I'm if I'm keeping it real. I don't think we're going to score, you know, if we can manage a touchdown, it's not going to be more than one. You know, we might get a couple field goals. Maybe we can get 
you know, maybe we get a touchdown and two field goals, 13 points. I mean, but I, I don't even think we'll be able to muster that. I think we're going to see a lot of three and outs. I think we're going to end up seeing a few turnovers, including some interceptions. Um, you know, I don't think Rosen's going to get out of this game uh, clean in the sense of not having an interception, right? I'm pretty sure he's going to throw at least one pick because this offensive line is so garbage, right? And he's going to be under duress all day. There's going to be multiple sacks right several tackles for loss our run run game is garbage they they can't run block to save their lives um and then on the flip side our defense might even start off okay but they're gonna break down right like like doug keeps saying that you know oh well you know we held the patriots to only 13 points before the half and somebody said, well, you know, we let up 59 points in the first game and 43 points in the second game. So that's clearly trending in the right direction, right? Come on, man. Like, really? Like, those are not things you should be leaning on, right? Because as we saw, after the first half, when the defense got, you know, worn down, they just started getting gashed left and right. So, you know, if they weren't able to hold up in the first half, which we might be, you know, we might have have to deal with the fact that that happens, right? Because if, if we start getting injuries and stuff, more injuries and so on and so forth, especially to our better players, then our defense could get worse and they might not even be able to hold tough at all in the first half and then we might see games where we give up over 50 points again and i mean look guys i wish it wasn't this way i really do but that's why i'm saying like and this is how i'll end it right because unfortunately again even if you think that there is a chance that this massive massive gamble that they're taking it's like, it's monumental, right? If you think that it could possibly, potentially, maybe pay off in a few years, the chances are real, guys. The chances are super real that we have the worst team in NFL history. Even worse than expansion teams have been. Even worse than we were when we were an expansion team. Guys. It's not worth this. But this is what this regime, starting with Steven Ross, has, you know, is pushing for. So, anyway, again, look. I've made a petition. I'm just going to plug this really quick. I, I, you know, try not to, to talk about it in all the videos. But I do have the, the link in every description box of every video. But I made a petition, man, to, to try and, you know, lead a, a people-driven, uh, people-powered, you know, movement to, to force Steven Ross to sell the team as majority owner and, you know, push this entire organization in a totally different direction, right? Because it starts with Steven Ross. Uh, he, he's, not, he's not fit to be the, uh, the, the owner of the Dolphins. And so if you guys believe that and if you guys, you know, think it's bullshit that, uh, you know, as fans, you know, and, and that's again, that's why I'm tired of the, the, the players being blamed because they shouldn't have to deal with this either. But as fans, if you're, if you're you know, pissed that we have to endure this, uh, you know, potentially the worst team ever to exist because they feel like it's worth taking a massive gamble on for success in like four years down the road. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, the world might come to an end in the next 10 years, right? Due to climate change. So we have to wait like half of that time before we can even be like competitive or relevant again. Anyway, so if you guys are pissed, man, sign that fucking petition because the only way that it can work is if it's people powered and people driven. 
Um, anyway, that's going to be it for my video. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, guys. I hope you guys enjoy my videos and, the, and my perspective and the things that I have to say. Uh, you know, Make sure that you share this around with your friends and family. Please spread it out there. Help us grow. Uh, we're getting close to 200 subscribers. Once we hit 1,000, that's a huge benchmark. And that can really, uh, um, you know, um, springboard this channel uh, and, and you know, the things that we want to do. Because I, I, it's not just, like, I want to do additional things for you guys, the viewers and the supporters that I have. But more than that, too, I want, I want, I want to do something so that way the fans, you know, can have a little bit more, I don't know, say, I guess, in, uh, you know, what's going on with this team, right? And we, you know, I want to, I, I want to I, I build a, a you know, a, a coalition amongst the fan base so that way we can affect some change, you know, and, and have a say in this. Um, anyway, so I hope you guys like all that. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.